This is a story about whisky. It is one about blending and innovation, risk-taking and challenging convention. More significantly, at its heart, it is about a family who have lived at Hazelwood House for generations. It's a tale best told by those who have made, known and nurtured the whiskies which make up the range. And where better to discover this than at the house itself? Welcome to Hazelwood House. Thank you very much. This is a home. It's a genuinely a home. Yeah, it, it genuinely is. It's a fun house. Uh, we couldn't understand as children why it was upside down. You know, why were the bedrooms downstairs? That didn't make any sense to us. But we loved it, you know. It was always a place of warmth. We don't really know when the house was actually built and what the, the original history of it was, but it's certainly somewhere where over the years the family have come and you know the children would come and the grandchildren would come because mostly to play in the garden. And it's, you know, I, I'm just looking at that, that, that photo there, which obviously isn't the, yeah. the, the, this house, but I mean, that's a big family. Well, it is and it isn't. You know, if you think um, I'm fifth generation, one of the youngest of the fifth, and but this is actually a small part of our family. There's a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah. You might imagine that the story of House of Hazelwood starts in a distillery, a warehouse, or a blending lab. In fact, its origins lie here in the Cabrach the remote and now sparsely populated plain in North East Scotland. I'm really intrigued as to how this story starts and who better to talk to than the archivist. The House of Hazelwood has got these great connections with the Grant family, but how do we get to the Gordon family from there? Um, and there is a story that involves this gentleman here, William Grant. He was coming back, he'd come up through Glen Bucket and he was taking a a cut across the Cabra. But the story is that William bumped into a fellow traveller, Mr Gordon of Reekham Lane, and um, this was their first meeting. OK, OK. Uh, it was almost a portent for the future, sure. because by the end of the 19th century, those two families had come together. Aha, uh -huh. OK. Um, and I think that's when we need to pull out this ah, fantastic oh, photograph. This amazing. So this is the wedding of Charles Gordon, okay. the gentleman here, who was a school teacher up the Cabrach, and of course the son of Mr Gordon at Reekham Lane, right. and William Grant's eldest daughter, Isabella. Right, okay. Um, now, she became Mrs Gordon, mm -hmm. and that's how we are sitting in this house to degree today, because this became really? another Gordon family home. So as Charles, he's clean, he's clean shaven, as you say. And there's a couple of nice photographs of him with his eldest son, or oh, indeed his okay. only son, William Grant Gordon. So we've now moved into 1930s. Mm -hmm. Things are beginning to change. Not an easy time for whiskey. Really. It's not at all, yeah. no. I mean, you've got the, the Prohibition, the Great Depression. A lot of the stores are cutting back on production. Um, but William Grant Gordon, he's taken the opposite strike. He's looking to expand, and actually the year he becomes chairman in 1936, there's plans are drawn up for the expansion of the distillery so they can produce more. Unfortunately, he's another one that passes away just a little bit too early. Mm. So it's 1953, um, and I think we need to start looking back through the photo. Oh, sure. I mean, we don't think. Here we go, there's a, there's a lovely photograph taken in the gardens here at Hazelwood House. So again, you've got um, William, his sister Janet, who actually lived in this house, and William's wife, Janet, also. So big Johnny, wee Johnny. And uh, Charles Gordon, ah. second Charles Gordon. There we are. You were talking about, I, I feel... I'm allowed to call her the wee Janny. Yeah. The wee Janny, yeah. Well, she was four foot ten. Yeah. <laughs> she always had to stand on a box when yeah. doing openings because she couldn't reach anything. <laughs> but then you know, you've got then you've got your uncle. It's uncle Charlie and Uncle Sandy, or 
accelerating the brake, as they were called, um, to do with you know their personalities, of course. But we look at these black and white photos, and you think, oh, that's from a long time ago. But this was my uncle Charlie. I worked with him, hand in hand. He kind of took me under his wing and um, brought me into the business. We are one of the last of a. A business where it's gone all the way through the generations it's never changed hands our business so we have we're lucky to have these amazing archives we've got and this property for example if the business had ever changed hands we wouldn't be holding on to these assets anymore we're so lucky we have that inventory and i really believe it to be the best inventory in scotch